Amen. Amen. Well, are you ready for the word? All right. Turn with me, please, in your Bibles to the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 52. Luke, chapter 2, verse 52. I read, the Bible says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and favor with man. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. Shall we read it together? Yes. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Let's read it together. Ready, go. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm continuing with my series that I started last week titled Increasing Your Capacity for Favor. Amen. Increasing Your Capacity for Favor. And this is part two. Uh, last week, we did establish the importance of increasing our capacity in this year of favor. For us as a commission, this year is our year of favor. And we have seen the hand of the Lord being made manifest on our lives and in our lives. And most of the times, the reason why many people don't experience much favor, favor is simply because their capacity is limited. Their capacity is limited. And so the scripture we read in the book of Luke chapter 2, verse 52, the Bible says that Jesus increased, he increased, it's a deliberate increase. It's a purposeful increase. And he increased in four different areas. Number one, Jesus increased in wisdom. Number one, Jesus increased in wisdom. Now, there's nothing in scripture that is by accident. Reason why Jesus increased in wisdom is because Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 tells us wisdom is the principal thing. In other words, is the most important, is the first. So the first thing Jesus increases capacity in is in wisdom. It's in wisdom, not in favor. It's in wisdom. Now let me say this. If you don't increase your capacity for favor, sorry, for wisdom, when favor comes, you will not be able to manage it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you following me? Amen. So the first area Jesus increased in is in wisdom. Number two, Jesus increased in stature. Number two, Jesus increased in what? In stature. Now, next week, by the grace of God, we're going to go uh, in detail and zoom and break these four areas down so you can see the operational manual of Jesus in these four capacity areas. Number three, Jesus increased in favor with God. Jesus increased in favor with God. Now, notice he increased in favor with God before favor with man. Most of the times we are looking to increase in favor with men yeah. before God. Yeah. Yeah. It seeks first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added. So number four, Jesus increased in favor with men. Jesus increased in favor with men. Now, we don't have that much time, so let's quickly go and look at our case studies in Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 7. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 7. Are you there? Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 7. I read, the Bible says, As so it was, as the multitudes pressed about him, Jesus, to hear the word of the Lord, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. I want you to notice what's happening here. Jesus is preaching at the sea. 
and it's not the most favorable environment, I must say, because at the seashore, there are severe wind that blows from the sea onto the people. And sometimes people can feel cold at the seashore and so on and so forth. But look at what's happening here. Even in that unfavorable environment, Jesus could see increase. The Bible says the multitude pressed on him, not for miracles, not for signs and wonders, but to hear the word of God. The word of God. Now look at verse 2. Verse 2, the Bible says that, and Jesus saw two boats. Now this is very interesting. Jesus saw two boats. Now, he's preaching to a multitude, and all of a sudden, he realized that his capacity has been exceeded. So whilst he's preaching, he's looking for ways and means to increase his capacity to be able to reach the multitudes. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, it's very important that if you're going to increase your capacity, you have the gift of observation. You have what? The, the gift, gift of, of observation. observation. Wherever you find yourself, there are opportunities there. It doesn't matter how tight it is. It doesn't matter how challenging the situation is. There are opportunities. So he saw two boats standing by the lake. The Bible says that, but the fishermen had gone out of them and they were washing their nets. Now I want you to notice what's happening here. In Jesus' ministry, he's experiencing massive harvest. But in the, in the business of the fishermen, they were experiencing massive drought. At the same place, two activities are happening. Very important activity. Number one, Jesus is experiencing multitudes. Number two, the fishermen were experiencing lack at the same place. At the same place. Not two different locations, at the same venue. But now I want you to notice what Jesus did. The Bible says that he saw two boats. Even though they were struggling with their business, Jesus saw an opportunity in their struggling business to turn it around for his favor to help expand his ministry further. Are you following me? This is very important. Verse 3, the Bible says that then he got into one of the boats, which were Simon's, and asked him to put out a little, underline that word, a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. So just have a picture of this. Jesus is preaching to a multitude. And the crowd is so thick that he doesn't no more have a place to stand. Mm, mm, mm. And so he goes around whilst he's preaching, whilst he's doing ministry, he's observing, and he sees two boats that were empty. And then the next thing, the Bible says that he got into one of the boats and he said to the owner of the boat, which we know, Peter, Push this boat a little. Mm. I want you to understand that increasing capacity for favor has a process assigned to it. Yeah. Capacity increase or capacity building begins with a process. Now, I know you are believing God for something big, but it starts little. Little. It starts how? Little. Many people want to increase their capacity and they say, okay, I'm going to start big. One million. 
You must learn to start with little. Look at the first instruction Jesus gave him. He said, put out a little from the land. A little. A little from the land. And then the next instruction, he said, verse 4, when he has stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. Now, the first instruction is a little. Mm. Second instruction, launch out into the deep. Now, that first instruction, put out a little and launch out into the deep, are the same words. They mean the same thing. But there is a process in expansion of capacity. Are you following what I'm saying? Right. Now, if you are going to experience the favor that God is bringing to you this year, start expanding your capacity little right. by little. Thank you, Jesus. Little by little. Amen. There is this book I read called The 1% Rule. The 1% Rule says that you must always do better the following day, increase your productivity only by 1% daily. So today, if you did, uh, uh, let's say you, you are a salesman or a saleswoman, you go to your shop, you sold stuff for 10,000 pounds, tomorrow increase by 1%. 1% increment daily will take you to a point where when you look back, you will see that you have expanded. Amen. But you see, if you have a target, a big target and say, tomorrow I'm going to increase by 100%, you haven't gone through little process. So, yes, our aim is 100%. But if you don't start from 1%, you struggle to achieve the 100%. And this is where many give up. So first instruction from Jesus, put out the boat from the land a little. Little increment of capacity is better than nothing. Are you, are you following what I'm saying? It is better to increase your capacity by 1% than not to increase it at all. And this is where many of us devalue the little increment. Oh, I want it big. You want to start a business? You want to start big. You want to think about, you see, one thing about me is when God gives me an instruction to do something, I don't look at details. I don't wait for details. I just start. Because if you start waiting for the details, Giants will start coming out of yeah, the details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those giants will discourage you. Yeah, that's true. And so what do I do? I just start. Mm. I just start. I don't wait for to everything for everything to be conducive before I start. I just start. <coughs> but many of us will start, if it's a business, we are now looking at business plan. We are looking at, I'm not saying business plan is wrong. We are looking at the name. Maybe I have to register the name. We are thinking about websites. We are thinking about, say, I'm going to make it big. Why don't you start little? little. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Start little. Yeah. Don't even worry about, too much about the name of that company or business. Just start. Yeah. If it's cooking, just start the cooking. Mm. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. Just start it. Don't wait for everything to be in place before you start. Learn to start how? Little. This church started little. God started a human race with one man. And then he moved to two. One man, one woman. And then he moved to four. And then eight. Today we are over 8 billion, am I right? Yeah. 8 billion on the surface of the earth. How did we begin? One, little. <coughs> How do we begin? Little. If it is savings, start little. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Start with one pound. Yeah. 
Saving one pound today is better than saving nothing yesterday. Start with little increment. Yes, we are believing God for expansion, for increasing our capacity for favor. But if you don't start little and you want to start big, you may not have the stamina to handle the largeness of the capacity. So, verse 4 of Luke chapter 5, Jesus said now, yes, We've launched out little. Now it's time to launch out further. Why? Because now your, your, your capacity has been tested for the first one. So now we know that you can move to the next level. And then verse 5, the Bible says that, But Simon Peter answered and said to him, Master, we have told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word... Will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fishes and the net was breaking. So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sing. So do you see the problem that Peter was facing? It wasn't an issue that there was no fish in the sea, it was lack of capacity. You see, if you are praying and say, oh, God, bless me, God, bless me, and you are not seeing the blessing, start asking God question. God, why am I not seeing the blessing? And then the Holy Spirit will begin to give you step by step. The reason why you are not seeing the blessing is because this area of your life is not aligned properly. Once that area of your life is aligned then the blessing will come. Mm. Listen, God is not a jackpot. Yeah. Yeah. God is not a jackpot. Yeah. Don't think that God dances to your tune. Yeah. God never changes. Amen. 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 And so it's not that there is no fish in the sea. There is massive sea. There is massive fish in the sea. You know, I hear people say conservation of fish. Uh, I'm like, you have no idea. You have no idea the billions of fishes in the sea. That has not even been discovered yet. No matter how much fish we eat, there will still be fish. So it's not that there was not much fish in the sea. It's because Peter lacked the ability to handle the fishes that he was trusting God for. And so this year, if the year ends without you experiencing the level of favor, we know it's not God. The problem is not God. Because God has in abundance and excess. The problem is you. You don't have the capacity to handle the blessing you are believing him for. And we saw, sadly, that Peter, when Jesus commanded launch out into the deep, he started giving excuses. I've noticed that People who don't, don't do well in life, they always have one excuse or the other. They're looking for someone to blame. <laughs> Why is your career not doing well? It's a witch somewhere in my village. No. Why is your marriage going through one, one crisis after another? Ah. Is, is the people from my father's village. No. No. It's you. You don't have the capacity, you don't have the relational capacity to be able to invest properly. And, and some of you married couples, you are scared of giving. You are in the marriage, but you're scared of giving. When I talk about giving, I'm talking about giving emotionally. You can't open your mouth and tell your husband or wife, I love you. And so your emotional capacity is exceeded. 
There is stiffness in that marriage. Nothing is happening. No love, no passion, and you blame it on somebody else. Why are you not letting go? Why are you not invested in the other person? It's some, sometimes you hear men say, oh, you know, you don't have to show women your emotion, you know. Even Jesus wept. Even Jesus wept. Are you stronger than Jesus? Men, men, are you stronger than Jesus? Are you? No, even Jesus wept. He exhibited his emotions. Yes, sir. Jesus groaned in his spirit. That's emotion. Why are you not investing your emotions in the marriage? Why are you blaming someone? Why? 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 You are not launching out deep into the deep. When Jesus is launched out into the deep, you are always saying, ah, I have told all night. I did this relation th thing last month. It didn't work. I've told all night. I did it last year. It didn't work. Who told you it will not work today? Yeah. Invest in that relationship. Any relationship you are not ready to invest in will not last. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Pastor. You are always blaming. Pastor, you don't know. You don't know this man. This man cannot change. Listen, every woman has the power to change any man. Every woman. The most anointed man. One of the most anointed men that ever stepped foot on earth was Samson. Delilah had the power to twist his mind around. That should tell you how influential women are. Use your influence properly. Amen. Amen. Use your influence how? Properly. And for those of you women who say, oh, my husband doesn't want to come to church, you are not using your influence. Yes. <laughs> you, are not, you, are not, you are not using it. You can use your, your influence to bring that man to church in one minute. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. He, he will be telling you, baby, when, what time are we going to church? <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you use that influence God has given you properly, that man, you, you will be now chasing him to church. And so don't say, oh, Pastor is a man. Oh, Pastor, you don't know this man. It's not the man, it's you. It's who? Take responsibility. Stop saying, oh, Pastor, uh, oh, Jesus, I have told all night and caught nothing. In this relationship, I'm, caught, I'm catching nothing. <laughs> All I'm doing is toiling. You can catch something in there. Catch something. Hallelujah. Amen. Catch something positive. Amen. Don't catch negative. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So increase your capacity Hallelujah. for emotions. Yeah. Increase your love capacity. Increase your love, love capacity. And look, look at verse 7. The Bible says that, verse 6, the Bible says, and when they had done this, what did they do? What Jesus said. Until you do the word, your capacity will be limited. Don't just come and hear the word and shout in church and not do the word. Church is a training ground. We are equipped. We are empowered. We are trained to take what we have heard out and do it. 
And when they had this done, what did they do? They caught a great multitude. That is the same Peter who just complained a few minutes ago that Jesus have told all night and caught nothing. So far as you are complaining, you will catch nothing. But the moment he did the word, listen, every problem you have, the solution, the prescription for that problem is in the word. Just do the word. Praise God. You've had, a, you've had a teaching on, on how to love your spouse. You live here today and say, oh, pastor, he doesn't know. He doesn't know. I'm married to this woman. I'm married to this man. I know how this man is. This man cannot change. This woman cannot change. You have not done the word. You have not done it. You are in that same position of complaining. And after they had done the word, the Bible says that they enclosed what? A great number of multitudes. And unfortunately, their net started breaking. That means, in as much as they were crying for more blessing, they were not that prepared. They were not prepared. And I want to show you something in verse 7. Verse 7 is very important. The Bible says that, and they signaled their partners in the other boats to come. That means this partners, their boat was also empty. Did you notice that? Yeah. They're in the same position. Their boat was also <laughs> empty. It was empty. Yeah. Jesus, on the same environment, his ministry is expanding. His ministry is increasing. But look, these people, they were going down. Their boat was empty. They called them, Peter called them when they came and they started feeling the other boat. The Bible says that the other boat started sinking together with this other, their boat. That means both of them were not prepared. Isn't it sad? That we are asking God and trusting God for the blessing, yet we are not willing to increase our capacity. The Bible says that, and their boat began to sink. May your capacity for favor this year not cause you to sink. Amen. May it not cause you to sink. Amen. This is so important. It's not just in increasing the capacity. The question is, when you increase the capacity, are you ready for what is coming? Yes. Are you ready for what is coming? Yes. Something big is coming. Are you ready for it? Yes, we're ready. By God's grace. Thank you, Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I believe that you will not miss your portion. Amen. In Jesus' name. It's time to increase our capacity. Listen, every increase you are believing God for, it requires space. Growth requires what? Space. And having cheap. Sometimes space will scare you. <laughs> When you enter into an empty space, it will scare you. Yeah. Because empty spaces have voices. They will tell you nobody has been able to feel this. Do you think you have what it takes to feel it? Empty spaces will scare you. I remember the first time we started the church in Northgate. We started in the big hall. It was so big. One pastor came there and said, why don't you have the service in a small hall? <laughs> why don't you use the small hall instead? You see, his vision was small. My vision was big hall. But a time came where that hall was too small to contain us. 
When we walked into here, this place is two and a half times bigger than Northgate. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We are less than three months here. And it's full already. But we must believe God for more space. Praise the Lord. We are going to move from here to a 10,000 seat auditorium. And when we get there, we must not allow the space to scare us. Thank you, Lord. Don't come and ask me, Pastor, how are we going to feel this? God himself will feel it. So don't allow empty environment, your capacity to scare you. Just keep creating the value. Keep, keep, keep increasing your capacity. One day it shall be filled in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you receive it today? Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus some praise. I want us to.